my beloved children, my brothers, my sisters, indeed, we are fortunate to be from among the Muslimin. We are fortunate to be from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no doubt that the biggest gift that we have is the gift of Iman. We have a set of rules and regulations that we have chosen to follow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the gift actually is. We believe. We believe that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. We believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah. We believe in all the messengers who were sent by Allah, those whose names we know, those whose names we don't know. Whenever we say one of the names that we know, we add to it, may peace be upon him or peace be upon them or alayhi salam or alayhi salam. Also, we believe in all the angels. We believe that these angels do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also believe in all the previous scriptures that they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that although it is the Quran that is in its authentic form, the other books, in brief, we do believe that they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The form that they may be in today can be disputed and is disputed. In fact, we believe it has been changed because the Quran tells us that there have been changes made to previous scriptures. But in a nutshell, we do acknowledge that the original form was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also believe that good and bad fate comes from Allah. And I can quickly explain that when there is something good that you would like, you need to work towards it. You need to work very hard to achieve it. Whether or not you achieve it is in the hands of Allah. How much Allah will give you in terms of energy and capacity and capability to work towards what you want to get is also in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you cannot sit back and relax and say that if Allah wants, he will give me. Because in that case, you were also to blame. Allah says, I gave you the energy to go and get it. You want to jump into the vehicle, you need to walk towards it, open the door and be seen to be getting inside. Because if you don't do that, you will be the only one to blame. You cannot sit in the masjid and make dua, Oh Allah, if you have written for me to get into the car, I will get in. One day passes and you are still saying, Oh Allah, if you have written for me to get into the car, I will get in. Brother, get up and walk towards the car. Say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, walk towards it. You will get in there in two minutes. But sometimes Allah does not allow that to happen even though you are trying. Then you understand that's the plan of Allah. There are some people, they become immobile. Maybe a person is getting there, he has a heart attack, he drops. Maybe a person becomes paralyzed. So many things can happen. Maybe as you are going, you see a snake between you and the car. So now it has stopped you from getting further. Unless you're an expert and you can just catch that snake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from snakes in human form. You know what that means? They are more dangerous than the other snakes. Because those snakes, you can see them moving. You know you need to protect yourself. But if you see in human form, it's so dangerous <laughs> because... It's not actually that the person is a snake, but rather the way they behave silently, quietly, they might be in disguise and suddenly they pounce and so on. May Allah make us all genuine. May Allah make us true to one another. Amen. We also believe that there is a day of judgment. What does that mean? Before I get to that, let me end or let me add one more point regarding the issue of fate. When something bad happens to you, you need to surrender to the decree of Allah to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We all belong to Allah and we will all return to Allah. And whatever has happened is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it could have been worse. When you are a believer, there is one statement that comes out of your mouth. 
when you have something negative that happened to you and that is you say it could have been worse it could have been worse If you don't look at it that way, you will become depressed, very depressed. Something happens to you and you think it's the end of the world. And this is why the Prophet Wasallam has taught us that you need to look at those who have less than you, those who are struggling more than you, those who have been through greater difficulty. You need to look at them. You need to be able to appreciate what you have by looking at someone who has less than you don't look at those who have more than you because you won't appreciate what Allah has given you you have a, a watch you can tell the time but you look at another person who has a rado for example and then what happens you are still telling your time now your heart is sore for what look at the one who tells the time just by looking at the Sun <laughs> it's a simple example but it it is it seeps through to a lot of other things in life even in your health we all struggle a little bit here and there we all go through matters don't think that you know I'm suffering I'm struggling and so just say look alhamdulillah I'm trying my best but there are people who are in a worse condition and they are doing better than us nowadays with YouTube and with the internet it's easy to look for people who don't have legs and hands and they are so happy and they are enjoying life and they are progressing and they are making the most of what Allah has given them and they are doing well I've seen so many of those and sometimes a person he just hit his nail the nail on the finger and he is depressed cannot come out cannot talk cannot see can nothing because his life is already gone according to him that's it it's over that's it my nail is gone Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us all. So that's part of the taqdeer and destiny that we believe in the power of Allah, the qudra, the power and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Together they make up this belief in taqdeer, destiny. So it's important for us to know that this set of beliefs actually makes our lives so beautiful. Now we move to the next point I was saying we believe in the last day and the day of judgment in the last day and the day of judgment Do you know what that means that means everything you do you say everything that has happened here you will be answerable you are answerable and you will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it what did you do what didn't you do why did you do what did you earn how did you earn where did you spend it why did you spend it everything you need to answer you need to answer and the beauty is the cornerstone of belief is that the Almighty who made me is most forgiving most forgiving he will forgive so I keep on seeking forgiveness on condition that I don't use it as a password to commit sin and to do that which is unacceptable some people they say Allah is Ghafoorur Rahim so I can go to the club when I come back I'll say oh Allah forgive me Allah is Ghafoorur Rahim so I can commit adultery when I come back I'll read two rakats of Salah and wipe it out don't play the game with Allah don't mess don't do that you may be punished penalized Allah gives you a chance you have a chance the chance is one day two days five days one year two years five years after that how long do you think you're going to play the fool with Allah for if the weakness human nature has made you fall how many times will you fall you need to get up and you need to walk you need to get up and change your life you need to get up and become a better person because your life is becoming shorter you need to get up and you understand the gift of Allah because you know you are answerable to Allah it makes you a disciplined person when you know that on the road there are policemen checking the speed and giving tickets to those who have committed offenses and you know there are many of them and you know in some countries you may not see them but electronically they are monitoring you and you get a fine a ticket 
You are penalized the minute you break a single rule. What will happen? You are conscious of it all the time. All the time. The speed limit is 60. You will move at 59. Because you know. That is because you don't want to be penalized and punished. There are rules and regulations, but you don't realize as a result of those rules and regulations, you are enjoying the roads because other people are also following the same rules. So now everyone is moving at a speed. It's controlled. When the traffic light is red, what happens? We stop. So we allow others to go. When it's green for us, they will stop and it will allow us to, to go and vice versa. So these rules are there in order to make things easy in order to make your life manageable. The rules of Islam, the rules laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are there for the same reason. But beyond that, not only your life, your akhirah as well. Today we are speaking about positive change. I started this way because if we don't believe, there will never be positive change. You need to have a firm conviction in you. You need to be caring. Bother. Bother about what? Yourself. Where am I? Where am I going? And everyone else. How am I reaching out to them? How can I serve the ummah for the sake of Allah? These children who are seated here, how can I impact upon them so that they can fulfill their salah, they can speak the truth, they can speak good words, they can protect themselves from swear words, etc. They can become more dutiful unto their parents. What have I done? How have I reached out to them? That concern itself is part of your conviction that you have a responsibility. If you think you don't have a responsibility and you are on earth in order to enjoy, then I want to tell you those who enjoy without limits are the ones who are punished for committing sin because there is a limit to enjoyment even in the rules of those who perhaps don't believe. You know what that means? When you want to enjoy, you cannot just do whatever is in your head. I want to enjoy, so let me do this, let me do that. Let me jump into the uncle's Jaguar and I'll take it. We'll enjoy while people are in the lecture, in the bayan, and we will go and we'll come back before it's over and no one is going to know. What happened? You succeeded. You enjoyed. And as you were driving at 160, 180, boom, big bang. <laughs> and what happened? You were caught. Everything went wrong. And you say, but I didn't plan this. Uncle, sorry, we were planning to come back quietly. <laughs> Too late. Even if you manage to come back quietly, but if you get caught, you are in deep soup. You are in a problem. You know that you cannot just enjoy according to your fancies. You see the car, mashallah. The most you can do is say, Uncle, you know what? Can we come for a drive with you? We want to check out what it's all about. A lot of the uncles will say no. But now after they hear this lecture, they might say, okay, you know. So you cannot enjoy as you wish. There, is, there are rules, regulations. If you do as you wish, you will be in big trouble. The same applies with the discipline in Islam. There needs to be some form of discipline. You need to know what you are allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. And you need to know that if Allah did not allow something, it is to benefit you. It's like a red light, traffic light. It's red, don't cross it. We are so frightened when it's red, we actually stop way before the lines and we make sure no crossing, especially when it's being implemented in a proper way. We are frightened. But when there's a red light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we say, Allah will forgive. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. How? Allah tells you what to do, what not to do. You know, the tax man, you need to fill the returns every so often and there is a deadline. You don't cross the date. Okay, imagine those who have the biggest businesses, a lot of the times they will be concerned. I don't want to be fined. I better make sure everything is okay. I better hand in my tax returns well within the date and so on. You are doing something in order to hand in all of this on time 
because you know I'm supposed to be doing this. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us just to fulfill your salah, just salah, and we're lazy, and then we want success, the ummah. My brothers and sisters, I want to share with you something that you know. The ummah is going through the greatest challenge that we have known in our history at the moment. In my life, I think at this juncture, I can tell you the ummah is going through much more than it ever has gone through during my life. And I'm sure the same can be said about you. Perhaps before our lives, they might have gone through lots of great challenges. But now we're going through a huge challenge. What's happening? Societies are crumbling. What's happening? Countries are crumbling. What's happening? By and large, there is a lot of hatred. There is a lot of division. There is a lot of animosity. We need to change that. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah will not change the condition of an ummah until and unless each individual changes himself or herself. You want the ummah, the condition to change, change yourself. A positive change. Become a better person. Start off with your relationship with Allah. Ask yourself, what am I doing? Do I fulfill my prayer? And if I do, how do I do it? Basic. How do I dress? How do I behave? Do I stay away from haram? Wallahi, if we don't, how do we accept, expect the help of Allah? Don't we want the help of Allah? How can you expect the help of Allah? When you are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Far. How much Quran do you read? And if you do read, do you try to understand? And if you do try to understand, do you try to implement? Do you try to put into practice what you learn? Many of us don't read the Quran every day. We read it now once in a while. We're waiting for Ramadan. Subhanallah. Why wait for Ramadan? We know Ramadan is a blessed month. They say, no, it's the month of the Quran. You have misinterpreted it. It does not mean Ramadan is month of the Quran. So the other months are not months of the Quran. Some people, that's how they translate it. They say, Quran, Ramadan. They say, why Ramadan? They say, because it's the month of Quran. Hey, hey, how can you misinterpret it that way? So do you read the Quran? Another point, do you abstain from prohibition? Do you look within yourself to see how can I improve myself? Talk to the people around you. How can I improve myself? Are you a person who controls your temper? If you don't, how will there be positive change in you and in society, community and the ummah at large? How? Don't we want the world to be a better place? Well, I can tell you, it seems like it's becoming worse. More fighting, more killing, more misunderstandings, more people who hate each other, more hate speech and so on. Everything is happening. Because where is the concern? We should be bothered about everyone. We should be bothered even about the animals. That's part of your deen. To be bothered about animals is part of your deen. A lady who was, harm, who was harmful or who harmed a cat, what happened to her? Punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who was kind to a dog, what happened to him? He was rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely if you were to harm another human being, you will have a bigger punishment than the woman who harmed a cat. And surely if you were to benefit another human being, you will have a better reward than the man who was kind to the dog. So be kind to one another. That's a positive change. And as youth, we look up to you and we have hope that you will lead us in a better way tomorrow. You, you need to get up and do something good. The initiative needs to come from you, whether you are at the schools or colleges or universities or beyond. You need to create an awareness of kindness and goodness. And mutual respect because we are losing that very fast 
We don't look at the common factors that we have. We only look at the differences we have. I promise you, with a person who doesn't like you at all, you have 10,000 common points. You have 10,000 common points. But they will pick on five things that you disagreed. That's it. And the, it's as though this person is really so bad, so bad that they are not even worth saving if they were drowning. I heard one man call another man a dog. He said, he's a dog. I looked at him and I said, hang on, you guys look alike. You are the same species. <laughs> if you call another a dog, it makes you a dog because you are the same species. You call another a pig, you are a pig because the same species. When people see you, they'll say you are the same species. When pigs look at you, they also think you're the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So there is no point in calling people derogatory terms because you are included in it. You don't realize that. And this is why when people do that, they are actually insulting themselves. Don't insult others. The Quran tells us very clearly that you don't insult others. Don't call people names. A group from amongst you should not scoff or mock at another group because they may be better than them. Who knows? And even that, you just don't do it. You're, you're a mu'min. You're a believer. The hadith says a mu'min is not vulgar. He's not fahish and mutafahish. He's not vulgar. He's not abusive with his tongue. He doesn't want to deliver that which is vulgar, unacceptable, abusive. How many of us are abusive? And then we say we believe in Allah. If you believe in Allah, you believe in the day of judgment. If you're abusive, what answer are you going to give to Allah? So much so that Allah tells us, Don't speak bad about each other behind your backs. If you are not in the presence of a person, say good things about them. Search for good things. Look, someone you didn't like, behind their backs, people say, you know, that brother is very bad, terrible. You see this? Say, no, no, he has a good smile. Subhanallah. What did I do? Change the topic. Talk about something nice. You cannot find anything good about someone? Well, in that case, you need help. Why do you need help? Because everyone has goodness, but you did not have the intellect to actually search for the goodness behind their backs speak good in front of them if they need correction you can correct them nicely or you might be wrong sometimes we tell people you know i think you are wrong and then they say oh how and then you talk to them you explain to them then they explain to you something if you are not proud you might realize guess what no i am wrong Thank you for explaining. Subhanallah. It happens. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a positive change. We need to be mature about things. We cannot be people who are so immature that we start fighting with one another over petty matters. When you have not solved a petty issue, it becomes so big that it continues. I give you one example. Brothers from one mother and one father. They have a small misunderstanding and they decide i don't want to talk to this guy anymore a lot of the times it's because of money a lot of the times it's because maybe because of some of your family members perhaps your wife perhaps someone else and someone might have said something and this is a test from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you did not know how to deal with it that's it you cut the relation and it's over okay you might not realize what you're doing but that is so dangerous because it seeps through to the next generation then your children they look at their own cousins and they don't want to talk to them why because the previous generation had a problem but these people are very good people they are good and then what happens their children now we're talking of the grandchildren of the original people who had such a petty problem that they could have resolved they are enemy number one and they really it's like one belongs to Musa alayhi salam and the other one belongs to Fir'aun. That's how it is. And what happened? It was a small matter. You go back, it was over $50. Because of $50 problem, $500 problem, $5,000 problem, 
$50,000 problem. Because of that, we destroyed three generations, four, five. We became two huge clans that are fighting each other. So sometimes we as children need to rise above the issue and say to that generation, you know what? You guys had the problem. We don't have that problem. We will solve the problem. Don't worry. That's my cousin. That's my second cousin. That's my brother. That is a good person. These people are good. Sometimes we need to wake up the people who are older than us. Sometimes it happens and it should be happening. You cannot allow matters to continue for generations. That is not mature. It is not the sign of a mu'min. The true mu'min is the one who solves the matters. This is why we say when husband and wife have a problem, solve it before you sleep. Same day. Resolve it. You must not go to bed with that problem not resolved because it sows a seed of dissent that would grow by the morning beyond where you thought it was. Especially if you have WhatsApp. Because what you do, you start WhatsApping. Who are you WhatsApping? Huh? Your friend, your family member, someone who sympathizes with you. What are they going to say? They will take your side. Very bad. That's what they will say. You know, today, this guy came home at one o'clock, for example. Ah, question him, ask him. I'm sure he was with some other girl and so on. That's what they will tell you because you have WhatsApp. But if you resolved it straight away immediately and you have the trust and inshallah, we hope that there is nothing mischievous happening. And if there was, at least the person can apologize and sort it out immediately. In that case, you have shunned the devil and you have turned towards Allah. You have followed the advice. You know, when a person, this is very good advice and I follow it too. When a person has been good to you for so many years, one day they made a mistake, two days they made a mistake. You don't have to destroy the entire relationship because of two mistakes they made. I recall there was a true example of a, an uncle, a brother, who had someone working for him as a helper in the home for many years. I think it was 14 years. And one day they went out on holiday and they must have left the vehicle in the, you know, in the garage, as they say. And this was one of the latest Mercedes. And this guy who was just the helper, he was now elderly, a little bit older. And he looked at the keys when he was cleaning the dressing table and he said, mm, automatic car. Wow. This was some time back. It's a true story. And so what happened is he looked at it again and he, it was so tempting because he's at home alone, you know, home alone. When you're home alone, there's a disaster. So what happened? He picked the keys up. He opened this garage. He turned this latest car on. Next best thing, he pressed the wrong pedal because what does he know about driving? The car zoomed straight through that front wall. Damaged, gone, finished, over. He, he didn't know what to do. He ran away. Uh, the boss came after some time and he was looking for this man. He found him. He said, look, what happened? I know you damaged the car, but don't worry. Come back. I forgive you. It's okay. The car will sort it out. It might have been insured or whatever it was. He says, come back. And he was telling the people later on that this guy worked for me so honestly for 14 years. So honestly. I haven't had a person who works as hard as him and who is so honest. He made a mistake one day. He made a mistake out of his own curiosity, excitement, whatever it was. He made a mistake. How can I replace this guy? I'm going to bring someone else. He's going to be worse. I don't even know him. No, you don't know the person. I'd rather the one I know than the one I don't know. He's not even a devil. He made a mistake. So you need to learn to forgive. You need to learn to understand. <laughs> it's very interesting. You know, the same way that Mercedes was damaged, we might just be announcing a number plate now for someone else's car. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. <laughs> okay, you know yesterday's story about Jannah, right? These vehicles are blocking the Janaza vehicle. Oh, I thought it was the Jannah vehicle. Okay. <laughs> but whoever's passed away, may Allah give them Jannah to Firdaus. Let's start with that. We need to move it because the van needs to go for the Janaza right now. 302-1873. May Allah give you Jannah too. MashaAllah.
Uh, that doesn't mean may you die. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean truly is may Allah give you Jannah. 3021873. If you get up and you can, uh, inshallah, crawl out by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> and then the other one is HM4457. MashaAllah. HM4457. May Allah give you Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah bless you. May Allah grant both of you goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. And may Allah give all those who have not committed this offense double what he gives them. <laughs> okay. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We need to be disciplined. Honestly, look, I give you an example. Not because it happened here, but it happens a lot of the times. When we park our vehicles as we are coming to the masjid, please make sure you don't block someone. The brother who brought me in today, I told him, please park the car as far as you can from the masjid. Because if we want to leave, there are going to be people who are blocking us. In that particular case, we'd rather park far away. And he says, don't worry, there is a place that they have kept for us because they know that we are coming in. I said, but you know, still, I would prefer if you parked far away. I don't mind walking half a kilometer, but you jump into your car and you drive out. You know what that means? Who would like to be blocked from amongst us? No one. Why do we block others? There are non-Muslims around us. We come for Salatul Jum'ah. We think we are entitled to park blocking the driveway of someone else. We think we are entitled to do that. Yet you are coming for Salat al-Jum'ah. The criminal was you and I who parked in that way. We did not come early for Jum'ah. Had you come earlier, you'd have got a better parking. And if you came earlier and everyone decided to come early, which is our dream by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that case, you wouldn't mind parking a bit further and taking a brisk walk. For every step you take, you are being rewarded. You know that. But no, we feel entitled. We are Muslimin irresponsible sometimes irresponsible so make that positive change you park you park correctly there is no parking you circle once twice and then you move further away there's no parking further away you go even further away take a walk it is much more rewarding Allah knows that you struggle to find the parking you parked a bit further you struggled you came out in the heat you might have sweated a little bit you might have had a few struggles but the reward is far greater than if you were to say, no problem, I'm just going for two minutes and I will come out. That two minutes is the problem. That is the problem. Nine times out of ten, those two minutes become a curse upon us. People sit in their cars waiting for you. What do they say? Not everyone is pious enough to say, may Allah bless them with Jannah. No. May Allah punish these people. I wish he damages his car as he goes out. You hear a lot of statements being thrown out. I mean, I'm not promoting that, but I'm saying that's what happens to man. Let's not do that. Either way, neither park your car in a bad way, nor be from among those who curse others who make mistakes. I just said that now. Sometimes a person makes a genuine mistake, you may make it too. But if you see that same red car with the same plate every time, it happened to me one Ramadan, every day, same brother. I say the number plate, I knew it off by heart. When they were coming with the note, I say, is that the number plate? They say, how do you know? I said, that's been happening for the last week. Same guy, I notice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So some people feel the entitlement. They feel like they are the ones who are supposed to be doing this. That is not true. That is not correct. You need to make sure you make that change for, by, this, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's get back to what we were saying. My brothers and sisters, when we allow a problem to grow, it seeps through to the next generations. We should never allow it to grow. Solve it as soon as possible. Try your best. I know some people have unique cases where they say, look, you know, this is such a big issue. Try. Keep on trying. Keep on trying. Even if you did not succeed, your children will know that my father was trying to solve the problem. So they will try too. But when you've given in, given up, and thrown in the towel, you know what? You're setting a bad example. As a leader, you never give up, you try. Yes, if someone wants you to give up justice, in that case, you can stand firm on justice, but you still keep trying. 
you can still keep trying for example someone stole your wealth someone might have abused it happens to some people someone might have committed rape someone might have committed a crime it doesn't mean that oh before i sleep i must sort the problem out it might take very long it might end up in a penal in, in penalizing that person it might go to the courts it might become really deep and it might cause a lot of stress and issues but you kept on trying it was not hatred but what it was the action they did was unacceptable and an example needed to be set that's what it is so that it can be a deterrent for those because i promise you if someone steals from you and you just say forgive every time what are you doing you may be encouraging other people to do the same so you need to know how to draw the balance if people always encouraged us to forgive everything in that case there are some major things that are not supposed to just be let you know to pass because if you are seen to be encouraging that behavior by letting the people who perpetrate a crime just go away no way people who abuse children for example may Allah protect us and our children what happens to them if we just say no it's okay let it happen let it go meaning it's okay forgive don't talk about it it's dirty hey hey you know there are so many who are suffering and people don't do anything about it because everyone seems to be saying the same thing you have to stand up respectfully solve the problem resolve it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength primarily we need belief remember build it build your iman build your conviction in Allah we believe that in Allah and Allah alone in his power we believe in his qudra we believe in his names and qualities we believe he is unique we believe he is the one and only we believe that he is the one who deserves to be worshipped and worshipped alone because he's our maker and we believe in the messengers and that message that came is totally sacred it is so sacred that i will adopt it i will follow it as best as i can and that will be my success in the dunya and the akhirah following following what what is right when you look at the muslimin subhanallah you know we have more rules and regulations perhaps than all faiths no drinking I'm not talking about water, I'm talking about drinking as in alcohol, intoxicants, nothing, no drugs. What else? So many rules and regulations, you know. And that's why you look at a true mu'min, he's already prepared to be a leader because he's got good qualities, speaks with respect, he doesn't have bad habits, he tries his best to be the top person, he's kind to everyone. That's a believer. I'm a, Mus I'm a Muslim. So that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And you see the eyes of a true believer. You can pick up already. This person is clear. You know, when you see someone with bad habits and you find that they look at you and the way they talk to you, you know, and so on. Already, you know, shame, excuse this person. You know, I saw one brother, a good brother, but he had a tattoo on his head, permanent tattoo on his head. And I looked at him and I said, Subhanallah, this person has now become a Muslim. And he is a Muslim, but during his ignorant days, he went to do something so silly that will stay with him forever. And he was telling me that, you know, I can't really take this out. I can't remove this because of the nature. I think it was done in a specific way. Or it's extremely difficult and painful to remove it. You cannot. Dangerous, actually. And I'm thinking to myself, look at this. As Muslimin, if we were disciplined from the beginning, we wouldn't have done that. I know another person, I don't know if they're Muslim, but I've seen them. They have pierced their cheeks and put through the cheeks some, uh, some jewelry, like a little piece of jewelry, a little stick, golden stick that went in and it's got two like earrings. I'm saying earrings, but because I don't know of anything called a cheek ring. But anyway, it's like a cheek ring. Okay, and for them it's supposed to have been cool, cool. <laughs> there comes a time when it becomes a bit hot. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. You regret these things. This is not the sign of a true believer. You don't do these things. You protect your body. It's an amana entrusted to you by Allah. He's going to ask you about it.
Don't I believe in the hereafter and the last day? It's an amana. Who gave me this body? Not me, not my father, not my mother. It was the maker. So I need to look after it, take care of it. Someone gives you something, it's entrusted to you. You look after it, you take care of it. And if you take care of it, you will be able to give it back to them one day and they will be happy with the way you looked after it. Subhanallah. The same applies to your body. Take care of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make a positive change in our lives. So, we need also to educate ourselves. Knowledge. Without knowledge, we won't be able to have or effect a positive change in our lives. Without knowledge, you won't really be able to achieve much. And in order to achieve that knowledge, you need to eradicate and fight laziness. It is very accessible today. But how many of us access it? You have your phone, for example. We watch YouTube clips. We watch comedy. We want to laugh at this. We watch a little show here and there. That same apparatus or gadget can be used to educate yourself. Educate yourself positively. Yes, you need to be careful where you are getting your knowledge from. It's true. Someone who doesn't have a degree in mathematics and you want to learn maths from them, what will they teach you? Someone who, who is not qualified in terms of medicine and they want to talk to you about the most sophisticated issue of medicine, you need to know when I hear this person, I can take them with a pinch of salt. The same applies when someone doesn't know the religion, they might want to encourage you, but they will not be able to give you the deep knowledge of Islam. A motivation is a motivation. When you are motivated, you need to do something about it because if you don't do something about it, it begins to dwindle. Right now, I'm speaking to you, for example. We need to be encouraged to do something about our level of education, Islamic education, as well as secular education. You need to do something about it. So if you feel good while we're talking right now and you say, right, I'm going to attend the tafsir lesson in the masjid. I'm going to attend a, a lesson of the Quran with that organization. I'm going to go to that scholar and I'm going to learn, for example, uh, fiqh or jurisprudence. And I'm going to do this. You need to make your resolutions now and you need to act upon it now. If you don't act upon it, do you know? Know what is going to happen you will actually lose the effect and impact of the motivation that you had at that moment when you are charged up you need to do something good because if you don't the charge dwindles after two three four days you won't remember anything you'll say yeah it was good mashallah we'll see next year <laughs> next year subhanallah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Lives need to change. And I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely has mercy upon us. And I know that we will be changing ourselves. We will be becoming better people. We take our work more seriously. Why is it that we find sometimes Muslimin, people who believe, they don't want to work hard at school, for example. They don't want to achieve when it comes to community matters. They don't want to contribute in society. You don't just contribute towards your Muslim cause and that's it. No, you contribute towards humanity. Yes, your family you begin with. Yes, your community you make sure is taken care of. But it goes beyond that to other communities, other societies. They are also human beings. This is the positive change that we need to talk about because you look at the problem across the globe. A lot of non-Muslims think that we are really nasty people. They just look at you and they say, hmm, these guys don't even talk to him and walk away. They don't realize every one of us needs to make sure that we do something about changing that perception. We have to. If we don't, matters are going to get worse over time. Minimum is a good expression on your face. As you walk, you acknowledge people, you may want to greet people, etc., etc. You know, <laughs> this is something that a lot of people talk about and don't know how to explain it. They say, Should you, are you allowed to greet a non-Muslim? Obviously you are. You don't use a salamu alaikum because... If you say to a non-Muslim, Assalamu Alaikum, they'll tell you, hello, hi. 
A lot of them won't want to respond with wa alaykum as salam, even if they know it. Because they're trying to tell you, I'm not a Muslim. I don't know if you've come across that. I'm sure you have, right? You say, assalamu alaykum. And they say, hello, 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 how are you, right? Is it wrong for them to say hello? No. But for you, you'd rather have said hello to start off with. Because the sunnah is to use a different greeting so that it can be more inclusive. You understand this? So I can say good morning, hello, how are you? That's fine. But I need to greet sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm a Muslim, I don't greet these people. You might not use the salam with them because obviously, assalamu alaikum, some people feel offended. I know back at home there was an instance where a Hindu boy had a problem with his parents because <laughs> there was a Muslim man who greeted him in front of his parents, assalamu alaikum. So they said, When did you convert? When did you convert? How come he's greeting you with salam? How come he's greeting you with salam? It caused a big commotion, big problem. And he said, hey, I don't even know that. You know what? Nothing like that. It's just that he greeted me with salam. So some people are offended when you greet them with salam. And as the hadith says, you know, la tabda'uhum bis salam. Which means that assalamu alaikum, you rather use something else. Hello, how are you? Etc. Good morning, like the people say. May Allah make it easy for us. So I hope I've clarified that, that you do greet, but you must use an inclusive greeting. You must use something that people will reply. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. A lot of the times there our family members are not Muslim sometimes. And we have neighbors, we have so many people around us who are not Muslimin. Don't be stuck up. Don't be arrogant. You're a Muslim. You need to be down to earth. You need to know what you have is a rare gem. You need to make sure you've showcased it in a way that when others see it, they want it too. Subhanallah. They want it too. The problem with us, that gem is full of, full of dust. And nobody even knows it's a gem. It looks like a stone. <laughs> Subhanallah. It looks like a stone. Shine it a bit. Develop yourself. Become a good person. Stop telling lies. A lot of people think it's okay to tell a lie. And then they say, you know, I read a hadith that if you want to solve a problem between people, you can lie. Oh, hang on. Are you using that as a green light to just tell lies to everyone? Just because you want to solve a problem? That's absolute nonsense. You cannot do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That's not the meaning of the hadith. And that's not even the hadith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. You speak the truth. You speak in a polite way you are upright so these are some of the teachings of the beautiful religion that we have islam it is such an amazing religion that if we were to adopt it correctly it would improve our lives and it would improve our hereafter the problem is a lot of us are not ready to learn a lot of us are not ready to put into practice a lot of us are not ready to change our bad ways and habits because we think that, you know what? I already know everything. I was born a Muslim. Who are you to tell me? No, you may have been born a Muslim, but sometimes there are people who were not born Muslim who know more because they studied more because they made an effort. They wanted to know. So they accepted Islam after having learned much more than you. They might come to you and tell you, I think what you're doing is actually wrong. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, as we see the young generation, we would like you to do better than us. Perhaps we see the globe in a few years time, inshallah, bi'ithnillah, by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll see a more peaceful place. We'll see a better place where people respect each other where people reach out to each other, where people actually care for each other. You know, to save a life is so sacred in Islam. It is so not just encouraged, it is an instruction. You must save lives. And to harm someone is such a big sin in Islam. So we need this, inshallah, to be the way forward. We will learn, we will develop our relationship with Allah, and we will develop our relationship with the rest of the creatures who the same Allah has made. The creatures that Allah has made, we respect them because Allah made them. He is my maker. I love him so much that anything he has made, 
I respect it. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. As far as I know, this was my last speech uh, for this particular tour here in Sri Lanka this year, 2017. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of forgiveness for every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of goodness and may Allah make it a means of solution for our problems. May Allah forgive our shortcomings and grant us a new chapter, a beginning, a new beginning where we respect each other. We learn to, where we learn to reach out to one another in the most positive way, where we become people who are exemplary. Someone watches you and they learn from you. They enjoy being in your company and may we be from amongst those whom at any given time we are prepared to help out we are prepared to help out you know you have volunteers who volunteer like the brothers who are who are just coming in and sitting down here volunteers they volunteer what do they do they want to help out volunteer whenever there is a good cause let's get up and volunteer today as i was coming here I saw a few youngsters passionately trying to stop the cars on the road and I was wondering what happened. Did you see them? They were washing the cars free of charge on the side of the road. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? They were washing the cars free on the side of the road. The brother who brought me here, we saw there, it says, get your car washed. That was the sign. It was almost covering the first lane and there's youngsters, youngsters looking like you and I. And they were passionate and a few of them were washing one car. They had two, three big drums there. And I'm thinking to myself, they must be making a bit of money. He says, no, it's free, totally free. I said, oh, if it was in my country, there'd be a queue of cars, mashallah. Queue, long queue, 20, 30 vehicles waiting, free wash. It was free. There were very few cars. I was wondering, I said, mashallah, Sri Lankans keep their cars very, very clean, especially in Colombo. Oh. I see it's, it's the pride of a person, the car they drive, mashallah, it's clean. And in Colombo, I think, has a slightly higher spec of vehicle than the surroundings. Look, may Allah forgive me for saying that, but it's something that perhaps might be true. Is it correct? Yes. Uh, you have to say yes because you are from Colombo, right? <laughs> uh, may Allah grant us good vehicles. May Allah grant us that spiritual vehicle that will take us to Jannah. Say Amin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are conscious of others. Those whom when we say words, when we say words, we actually think before we utter them. If they are hurtful, abusive, vulgar, we don't say them. If they are filled with benefit, and goodness, and inshallah, reaching out to people, we will then utter them and we will benefit the ummah. May Allah grant us positive change. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natu.